Let's play rock, play paper, scissors to see whose fault it is that this team is bad. I'm kind of kidding, but I'm kind of not because nobody knows what the answer is. Listen up on Locked on Jaguar. You are Locked on Jaguars, your daily Jacksonville Jaguars podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. It is exactly that your team every day we thank you for making us your first listen here on locked on jaguars that you can find on our youtube page to watch and you can also find it wherever you listen to your podcast just make sure you check into that location each and every day thank you to the everydayers for joining us here on locked on jaguars and today's show is brought to you and sponsored by linkedin that's right man linkedin talent solutions if you open a small business you better be hollering at LinkedIn because that is where you can find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL terms and conditions apply. Let me let you know what we're getting into today. We're going to give you the outlook moving ahead after we cause a little discourse ourselves with what is going on with this team in segment two, right in the middle of the show. What is, what if Mac, I'm going to leave it empty, but what if Mac, who, who looks like he's going to start because Trevor Lawrence is trending to not play this weekend. First, though, before we have that conversation, finding the culprit for being bad. And I know that that is a hard thing to do because uh, the Jaguars probably don't know why they're bad because they can't tell you why they're bad. All the only thing they say is, I don't know, man, we've been together too long for this to be like this. If y'all, you know, just in case y'all don't know, they're two and seven. They're two and seven. And uh, when you ask why, just can't they put their finger on it? And every time they have a, a win, which has been twice in the nine weeks that they've played, you hear stuff like, I think we finally figured it out. And then they don't figure it out the next week when they lose again. So the, the thing is, is maybe the answer is they ain't figured nothing out. And when they win, they're just as surprised as you are. And when they lose, they're just as surprised that they're lost, but not really that surprised because they kind of lose a lot, right? Not as much as they did in the past, but this year, the Jaguars appear to be a worse team than, than they've been since Doug Peterson arrived. They look like the team that Doug Peterson took over. There's no confidence from around the league. There's no confidence, it appears, in the city. There's no confidence from fans. And I know on Trayvon Walker's touchdown last week against Philly, it came out from Josh Hines Island that they played rock, paper, scissors to see who was going to go into the game. At the time, they were losing, right? And they had just gotten the ball back. Um, and it was a joke that that people have really just taken and run with it because that's what we do, right? We take and run with things. But ain't nobody laughing. And I know uh, there are a lot of people in the media saying, oh, it was a tongue-in-cheek. If they were winning, nobody would care. Yeah, that's a big if. Nobody care. Yeah, you know what? If I was 6'7", I'd have been in the NBA, but I'm not. I'm six feet, 260 pounds. In fact, with those numbers, I can't even play in the NFL. I'm positionless. I'd be like a long snapper, maybe, if my hips were loose, but they're not. So, you know, if if it was a fifth, I, we'd all be drunk, but we're sober. The only thing we're drunk, we're just losing. So there's nothing funny. There's nothing funny. But it is a microcosm of what is going on this year. On what planet do your two best defensive players that complement each other need to be picking and choosing who's going into a game that you're losing on the road after change of possession? You see my point? And Ryan Nielsen, who I gave every benefit of the doubt, says it's part of our rotation. You know what that rotation is equivalent to, in my opinion? That rotation is equivalent to this. Let's just say you Team A has the Dallas Cowboys offensive line from the 90s. And Team B has the Jacksonville Jaguars offensive line from 2023. And I would say 2024, but the offensive line kind of, I've been beating up on it for three years, well, probably six years, but they played a little bit better the last few weeks. And let's just say both teams have a chart, a chart that tells you when to go for it on fourth and one 
and when not to go for it on fourth and one. Same chart for two teams. And both coaches look down at the chart for him to tell him what to do. But one team has one of the worst offensive lines in the history of the league. And the other team has one of the best offensive lines this league has ever seen. Who do you think that chart's going to help most? The chart is, is, is a cookie cutter thing. Just like sub, uh, scheduled substitutions. It's a cookie cutter thing. It doesn't give you situationals. It doesn't tell you who needs to be on the field in crunch time. It doesn't tell you when you need your best players on the field to make a play. When Trayvon Walker made the play and he picked up that fumble and ran it back for a touchdown, it was a good moment for the Jaguars. Josh Allen should have been on the field also. In no, And now you have, I believe it was Trent Baalke that that said this. I, I think it was Trent. It may, have been, it may have been Doug, but I'm quite sure it was Trent that told somebody that when they talked to Eric Armstead in free agency that it was sort of his idea that he would play more big end than he would on the interior. And it, it kind of made it seem like because at this point in his career and all of that stuff. And when people kept wondering why he was spending so much time at end, because he spent more time at three technique in, in San Francisco, but he also would go to the end every now and then. But he spends more time as a reserve in a three year, $51 million deal. Don't know. I can, I can look up the specifics and tell you exactly how much of it was uh, guaranteed. But the thing is, is, 43.5 million. The Jaguar signed Armstead to a three-year 43.5 million dollars guaranteed, including uh well a total contract, including 12.5 million dollars in the signing bonus and 28 million dollars guaranteed. They spent 28 million dollars on a backup guaranteed money on a reserve edge rusher whose best years were at defensive tackle. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to look up something else real quick. Trayvon Walker's contract is a four-year, $37 million contract with $37 million guaranteed. That's good money. First overall pick, $37 million guaranteed. That's $9 million more guaranteed over a four-year deal than Eric Armstead has over a three-year deal. So Armstead comes out and, and basically says, no, no, it was the Jags. It was This is what they wanted. The Jags, it was their suggestion to do that. So see here, this is where the finger pointing starts, right? What's the truth and what's not? And if the Jags asked him to do that and he agreed to it, then he's complicit, right? He agreed to do it and they agreed to pay him. But I wonder how many other teams were guaranteeing him $28 million. And that leads to a, that leads to another point. If he wanted to play on the inside, which it sounds like it's the best thing for him, which it also sounds like he didn't ask to play outside. They asked that of him. He said, okay, cool, I'll do it. If he didn't want to do it, he could have gone somewhere else. But maybe no one else is offering him that money, so that's why he chose to come here. And if no one else is offering him that money and he chose to do something that uh, I'll do it. I don't care. That's a problem too. That's a pro that's a team building problem. That's a you reach for somebody problem. But the mismanagement, the discourse, and now I wonder how he feels knowing that when the pressure got hot, whoever it was in management that told somebody in the media, oh no, that we we talked about that in free agency. That's what he wanted. How does that make him feel about them now? So you just can't get people under contract and start having these differences. You can because you know there's nothing they can do about it. But you know what? It affects how they do their job every day. And that's why I'm going back to leadership. I'm going back to Trent Baalke. And I'm going back to a word that y'all ain't heard me mention in over a year and a half or two years. And that is messaging. Here we go again with the BS. And the BS doesn't stop. And this is the kind of stuff that I keep talking about. Y'all actually, and even if they were being tongue in cheek about rock, paper, scissors, who's going into the game. 
And even when Ryan Nielsen says, oh, you know, they're just probably joking. And, you know, even if it wasn't his turn or it was his turn, you couldn't keep him off that field. He was going anyway. It's part of our rotation. That rotation is the problem. Everybody rotates. But if you have an automatic rotation that is built in without looking at game situations and what it feels like right now, that is problematic for me. This entire thing needs to be gone. I'm sick of it. We previewed the Vikings game yesterday. I don't think they're going to win. And now it looks like Trevor Jones, uh, Trevor, Trevor Jones, Trevor Lawrence isn't going to play. So here's something I'm going to give you. Doug Peterson has been more and more critical of Trevor Lawrence. It hasn't been nasty, but fans act like he can't criticize Trevor. And I'll talk about that soon, too. Like, we need to get off of that. But the reason why fans think that is because fans think that Doug has bigger fish to fry than pointing out Trevor Lawrence. Well, he probably does. But I will tell you this. Doug Peterson also has the right to question everything if he wants to. He's the coach. If this whole thing, nobody can say anything bad about Trevor. Y'all need to get rid of that. That's crazy. I saw I saw the greatest quarterbacks of all time get criticized before. And I'm not talking about to do it so much as publicly, because maybe sometimes that stuff needs to be from that perspective. Like, don't call your quarterback out. You're going to need him to be the leader. Maybe you're right. Some things need to be kept between them and kept in house. But that's not why most of the people are sitting out here saying that you don't question uh, Trevor Lawrence. They're saying that because they have deitized Trevor Lawrence from the day that they realized the Jaguars got that number one pick and they, for whatever reason, Trevor Lawrence can do whatever he wants to do and ain't nobody, there's a certain group of people that they're not going to care. They're going to make an excuse for him. And that lying to yourself has to stop. I'm going to tell you why if Mac Jones plays well, the discourse will continue. We'll get to that in just a second here on Locked on Jaguar. Today's show is sponsored and brought to you by Arena Club. I like collecting cards. You like it? Good. Sometimes when you collect, it gets a little bit expensive, right? Most of us like doing it. And the idea of spending $2,000 on a Luca card, an Ellie card, or a Mahomes rookie card just isn't in the cards, if you know what I mean. I love collecting, but that's some serious money to drop. Thanks to Slab Packs at ArenaClub.com, now it's possible to score gym mints for a fraction of their retail price. Every card that I listed was a hit from last week's Arena Club Slab Pack drop. Arena Club is the only repack that provides real value, a complete view of all possible cards and clear hit rates for each one. The Arena Club grading process is accurate, fast and transparent with a full grade rationale provided an explanation of how your card was scored. Right now, you can get 10 percent off your first slab pack or card purchase by going to arena club.com slash locked on NFL. Use the code locked on NFL. That's arena club.com slash locked on NFL. Code locked on NFL for 10% off your first purchase. And today's show is brought to you and sponsored by HIMS. HIMS is changing men's health care by providing you with access to affordable, affordable sexual health treatments from the comfort of your home. Guys, sometimes intimate moments happen spontaneously and we always want to be ready so we can perform in the bedroom. HIMSS provides access to treatments that can help you stay hard and last longer, giving you that boost of confidence so you can be ready whenever the mood strikes, if you know what I mean. Start your free online visit today at HIMSS.com slash locked on. That's HIMSS, H-I-M-S dot com slash locked on for your personalized ED treatment options. Hems.com slash locked on. The products mentioned are chewable compounded products which are not approved by or verified for safety of effectiveness by the FDA. Prescriptions require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who would determine if appropriate restrictions apply. See website for details and important safety information. Subscription required. Price varies based on product and subscription plan. All right, we're running it down here on Locked 
Locked On Jaguars. Where it is your team every day. We thank you for making us your first listen here. Talking about finding the culprit for being bad. Maybe you ought to play rock, paper, scissors. And whoever loses, then we can just blame them for it. Because it seems like there is no accountability. We are in serious CYA territory when it comes to the Jacksonville Jaguars. And don't don't say I didn't tell you what's going to happen. Because that's exactly what it is. Armstead says, no, he told me they wanted me to play in. And Trent said, ah, he, no, he asked us, could he play more in? Yeah, well, that $28 million guarantee tells me that Armstead is telling the truth. Because at the time, they had Roy Robinson Harris on the contract. They could have moved him before the season started, but they didn't. They And, and they're gonna, they have dead money that they have to pay. They they have an extended, an extended um, uh, Devon Hamilton. They drafted in the second round, Mason Smith, and then they drafted Jordan Jefferson. So they had uh, sort of a log jam at D tackle. I think the Jaguars intention was to play him at backup end at $28 million guaranteed. And I think it was a mistake. Considering that that's how they're using him totally, that I didn't think it was a mistake then to add him to the team because I thought I looked at it like a team that thought they could win 11 games going out and adding a guy with a uh, championship game pedigree. And I thought they were going to play him at three technique. In fact, if anyone is here, y'all can remember doing training camp when I did the, the way too early 53. One, one time when I talked about cuts, I said, I don't know if Roy Robinson Harris makes it, even though his contract said he's supposed to. Because of the team building and the construction of the team, the same way I said last year when Foley Fadakazi had gone through training camp, banged up, and they only kept one other guy over 300 pounds on this roster. And Devon Hamilton was already missing. So it was Foley Fadakazi. And when he got hurt, I said, they're going to be, they, they ain't got no hind parts. They're going to be too small in the middle. And sure enough, that's why they went out and tried to shore this middle of this team up. And it just did not work. The question I want to know is this. Without Trevor Lawrence, if this team looks exactly the same, then now you got proof. Okay, press, Doug. Doug not only as the play caller and the, and the head coach or whoever's calling plays or the game plan builder, but also as the defense coordinator for standing around watching Ryan Nielsen just sub guys in and out. What would Trayvon and Josh Allen's stats be if, if they weren't subbed out so much? Both of those guys look like they're in tip-top shape. Teams aren't running tempo. I just don't understand why they're not on the field 80% of the time, old like Miles Garrett and Nick Bosa and everybody else. I don't get putting your best players on a pitch count when it's not necessary. They ought to wave themselves out first. You shouldn't even be substituting them. There's some guys that they will wave. Get, I want them to be so – I want the Jaguars players to be a certain way where they wave guys off. No, I got this. I got it. The only time you switch guys like that is when all of those guys are even like Baltimore used to do that all the time. But that's not the case. My point is, is this. What if they look better? And what if they beat the Vikings who have this vaunted uh, scheme defensively with Brian Flores and right now sitting there as a six win team? What if they beat Minnesota and Mac Jones has a day and this offense has a day? First of all, that'll be the first good team they beat all year. With all due respect. The Colts ain't that good, all right? What, what will we say then? I'm going to tell you what the discourse is going to sound like. So Doug finally got – this is this will be like Carson Wentz going down and then Nick Foles coming in. It ain't going to be a Super Bowl, but there will be skeptics and there will be people like, so maybe it isn't their offense. Maybe it's the guy running it. Or why did the guys respond for Mac and they don't respond for Trevor? Well, how come there weren't these interceptions or that one or two ball balls that and why did he get the ball out and why and how come he didn't spin to his left? All of the things that Trevor does that bothers people is going to be magnified if Mac wins. Now, I'm not going to overreact over one game. I'm not going to do that here. And we're not going to do that on our postcast Sunday if that happens. But I know who will a whole bunch of people out there and then a whole bunch of national people. And then all of these narratives will start. And if there's really dysfunction between Doug and Trevor, Doug is would never do this publicly, but do you think there's a little bit of, oh, uh, so y'all didn't believe me when I was criticizing Trevor from Doug. And if he does play well, 
I'm sure Trent Baalke would find a way to say, well, that's why you go and get a, a, a guy who's played games with first-round pedigree just for these situations. They're going to milk it. They're going to sit there. I did a little nice little impression there. But they're going to sit here and twist it for whatever. And then you'll hear maybe we can make a run. And then you'll hear the fans say, stick with him. Don't put the other guy back. I'm telling you, some of them. Some of them. Or the Jaguars could go out and get skull drugged and everybody will say it's time. And then they got another whooping coming the following week against the Detroit Lions. The thing about dysfunction and discourse is it changes its mask every day. It's because with the onions of burnt man, you can try to disguise this all you want to. It, it, the the conversations going on around this team right now are not conversations that go on around a team that's that's good or that's well put together or has a good culture and there's no way people in that building can talk about culture and not look in the mirror because they have had the team Trent Baalke has been here for four years and he's had every single resource available to him and he hasn't done anything I'm gonna tell you why moving ahead all of these things are important this weekend some people want the Jaguars to get wiped clean so they can say, all right, now, come on, shot. what you going to do? We'll discuss that in segment three here on Locked on Jaguar. LinkedIn Talent Solutions, man, is the real deal, especially if you're opening a small business like the ones that I have opened over the years. When you're hiring for those businesses, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. I opened a 10 chair barbershop, man. I hired six people in two days. LinkedIn helped me do it and they lasted. The people I hired on my own, I had to run them out of there. LinkedIn isn't just a job board. It helps you hire professionals you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new job, but might be open to the perfect role. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and might not have the time for resources to hire. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash locked on NFL. That's LinkedIn.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free terms and conditions apply. And today's show is sponsored and brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So you need to get ready to tackle the NFL action with FanDuel because right now new customers can bet $5, get $150 in bonus bets if you win. Important three words, if you win. The FanDuel Sportsbook app also gives you everything you need to place live bets on the NFL all in one place. You have to fumble trying to hide your screen from the sun if you're at the game. Nah, you got to do all that. You know what page you're on. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game and you can check out the latest stats right from that page and view live play by play and so much more on the same page where you make your bets. Just visit FanDuel.com to join today. You'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. Never waste a hunch and make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports book partner of the NFL. All right, running it down here on Locked On Jaguars, where it's your team every day. Make sure you tune in to the new Locked On NFL show where you get a double dose of NFL action with the madman Tyler rolling early in the morning with a double shot of espresso and then me, Tony Wiggins, sliding through the middle of the day in the barbershop, real laid back, using local experts that know your team like no one else. Make sure you tap into the Locked On NFL show, the new version, twice a day, wherever you get your podcasts wherever you look or listen to your podcast. Now, let's get back to it. We're talking about finding a culprit for being bad. I don't think I have the answer. So I'm gonna get, I want to get rid of everybody in the front office and start over. You can't get rid of players. I want to start everybody over and give Trevor Lawrence a brand new beginning. What if Mac Jones plays well? We're going to have to revisit that. Uh, either we're going to be revis visiting that subject this weekend on the postcast, which will come uh, about 30 minutes after uh, the game has ended, or we'll be talking about the fact that it doesn't matter who the quarterback is, this looks terrible, we need to start over right now. And then preparing ourselves for the whooping that's going to come the following week against the Detroit Lions. 
Either way, the outlook moving forward is going to be one that is just as dysfunctional as this team. It's going to have it's going to be organized dysfunction, but that's what it is. You're going to see a lot of arguing, more arguing than you saw the other night after the election. Trust me, you're going to have discourse among Jaguar fans, amongst Jaguar fans, and people ain't going to understand who is responsible for what. And then just like the other night, a lot of people are going to see it right in front of their face and still ain't going to admit it because they don't want to admit that they're wrong. And that that happens in both ways the outlook for me says this there is no way other than them running off six straight wins there is no way shot Khan can keep these group of guys together there's no way unless the jaguars fig figure out some magical way to win this game tomorrow and then run off the next five after that, after the bye week. I think they got five games after the bye week, but I know their toughest games, but they, they still got Houston. They got Houston after this again. They're struggling a little bit, and the Jaguars always play them kind of tough, but you just never know. I think they're going to have to win everything. They're going to have to win this week, and then they're going to have to make sure that they don't lose another game. So they're two and seven. They got to at least go nine and eight. And they're not going to be favored the next two weeks. Then they probably won't be favored when they go to Indy. I think they can beat the Titans. They can beat the Raiders. I, I just don't see them winning a bunch of games down the stretch. So the outlook is, is pretty simple to me. And I like all of this stuff that's going on. I like the discourse a little bit because sometimes you actually have to if you put a mirror up and you want to lie to yourself, that's fine. Open the door. Let everybody else look in and let people tell you exactly what they see that's wrong with you. They might not know how it got to that point, but most people will be honest with you and tell you, you stink. If you don't believe people, just look at the scoreboard and look at the stats and look at um, look at uh, time of possession and look at turnovers and look at red zone efficiency. And then listen to, to all of this foolishness. This stuff should not be happening. They have said this. These are their words, not mine. This stuff should not be happening at this stage since they've been together. That means either the message isn't good. It's a good mess or it's a good message that isn't being received because our delivery isn't good or our accountability for that message isn't good or the players aren't good. Or the players can be good, but they don't fit and don't match, which would lead to the GM being a problem. Rock, paper, scissors. Which one is it? I'm going to say it's the rock, it's the paper, and somewhat the scissors. The scissors are the players. But it's them two. It's not injuries. It's not an offensive line that hasn't been together. It's not bad luck. They're bad football team people. It's what it is. If they win this game, I'm, I'm not going to change my opinion. Because if they win this game without Trevor Lawrence, oh, trust me, we ain't even talk about whether or not they're good or not. We're going to be talking about what was the difference between this game and all the rest of the games this season. I know it's coming. You know it's coming. So make sure you check in and tap in 30 minutes after the game this, this weekend for a postcast here on Locked on Jaguars, and we'll see what happens. You guys, make sure you have a good weekend. Enjoy yourself. The weather is extremely nice. Please be careful. Enjoy the game. And we'll see you next time.